In November 1973, NASA's Mariner 10 began its historic journey to the solar system's innermost planets when it was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Mariner 10 was a groundbreaking space probe that was designed to mainly study the planet Mercury, an accomplishment that wouldn't happen again for more than 30 years. It was also the first spacecraft to explore two planets during a single mission, the first to use a gravity assist to change its flight path, and the first to return to its target after the initial encounter. Despite several mechanical problems during the mission, which included malfunctions in the high-gain antenna and the attitude control system, NASA persevered with the struggling spacecraft, which ultimately provided them with a lot of scientific data. After a couple of mid-course corrections, Mariner 10 was set on a flight path that would initially take it to Venus, where it would complete the first ever gravity assist maneuver, a practice that is now a standard part of space navigation. After receiving the gravity boost, Mariner 10 then had the right speed and trajectory to take it all the way to Mercury placing it into an orbit around the Sun that would allow multiple flybys of the solar system's innermost planet. But before Mariner 10 would ever make it to Mercury, it would first have to test and calibrate its two onboard cameras. These grainy but incredible images were taken shortly after the launch, as the spacecraft was leaving the Earth's atmosphere. Several hundred photographs were snapped, giving the imaging team the chance to make sure that the cameras were working correctly in preparation for the main mission. Many of the photos were used to create highly detailed mosaics, such as this black and white mosaic, which reveals the Earth's clouds, oceans and curvature, confirming that the spacecraft was capable of capturing and returning multiple high-resolution images. Mariner 10 also captured the Earth and Moon from 1.6 million miles away, completing the first ever Earth-Moon encounter by a spacecraft that is capable of returning detailed digital color image data. These images have been combined to illustrate the relative sizes of the two objects, but it also provides us with a unique view of the Earth making it almost appear as a planet made only of water. Travelling at a speed of nearly 24,000 miles per hour, Mariner 10 continued on its mission, disappearing into the darkness of space towards its first destination. And in February 1974, just three months after its launch, the spacecraft arrived at Venus. This mosaic is made up of 78 photographs that were captured through orange and UV filters. By using these filters, we can see Venus in a natural colour, while revealing some of the planet's mysterious cloud features. Because Venus is shrouded in a thick, dense atmosphere, the planet is normally observed as a hazy, pale yellow ball, showing a world that is generally featureless in visible light. But by using an ultraviolet filter, Mariner 10 was able to capture Venus in a way that had never been seen before. This incredible image has been colour enhanced to bring out the cloudy atmosphere of Venus as the human eye would see it. It exposes an active atmosphere that is swirling around the planet's scorching surface. During its flyby, Mariner 10 snapped thousands of photographs of Venus, and by processing many of the images into mosaics, it was possible to make a time-lapse of the planet that reveals the rotation of the Venusian atmosphere. The grainy video shows bright and dark clouds that are in constant motion, 
with a possible vortex that is raging in the South Polar region. Assisted by the Venusian gravity, Mariner 10 was now heading towards the solar system's innermost planet, a world that at the time had never been explored by any other spacecraft. Mercury has always been difficult to observe through a telescope due to its close proximity to the Sun, making it lost in our star's solar glare. But in March 1974, about seven weeks after its Venus flyby, Mariner 10 had finally arrived at Mercury. This mosaic reveals Mercury just six hours before Mariner 10's closest approach, showing us a planet that is very much like our moon. A barren landscape that is covered in basins, craters, ridges and plains. After passing the dark side of Mercury, Mariner 10 gave us an outbound view of the planet, exposing a somewhat illuminated hemisphere. Because of Mariner 10's trajectory, the spacecraft looped around the Sun while Mercury completed its own orbit, allowing Mariner 10 the chance to encounter the strange world a second and a third time. The second flyby occurred in September 1974 and the third in March 1975. These close-up images give us an incredible view of the planet's strange landscape that is scarred with large-scale lava flows and riddled with craters that occurred during an ancient bombardment. Shallow radial ridges can be seen at the edges of the impact craters, while secondary smaller craters are scattered all around, exposing a clear picture of Mercury's violent history. One of the most spectacular surface features on Mercury is the Calorus Basin, a huge crater that is approximately 960 miles in diameter and is surrounded by concentric rings of towering mountains. Other close-up images from Mariner 10 also revealed that the surface of Mercury is covered with long, curving ridges that are called scarps. They are upwards of 2 miles high and 300 miles long that run right through craters, indicating that they must have formed after the heavy bombardment period about 3.9 billion years ago. In March 1975, soon after Mariner 10's third and final flyby of Mercury, the spacecraft depleted the last of its fuel supply and the team at NASA turned off its transmitter. Throughout its journey, Mariner 10 captured over 7,000 photos of Earth, the Moon, Venus and Mercury. It became a demonstration on how to adapt future missions on the fly when things do not go to plan, but it also made some amazing discoveries, such as detecting Mercury's magnetic field, its weak atmosphere and its large iron core. Today, Mariner 10 is still possibly orbiting the Sun, but unable to communicate with Earth just drifting through space as a reminder of our great space exploring history.